Welcome to the Houston Cinema Arts Society 2020. Um, thank you for, for, uh, for watching Harrison Guy's Take Me to the Water and for joining us for this post-screening Q&A. I am Molly Haven Miller, the Executive Director of Dance Source Houston, and so thrilled to be joined here with Harrison Guy, the Founder and Artistic Director of Urban Souls Dance Company. Hey, Harrison. Hello. How are you? I am good. I am doing. I am um, really excited to be here. Um, I'm excited about the time. You know, I think that, you know, this particular time brings about a lot of feelings. Um, but one of the ones that I uh, hope to keep is the, the energy of uh, innovation and creativity. I think that that is uh, something that this moment has brought about. And so I'm just really excited about the art that's happening and the work that's happening. Um, and I'm really in a space of gratitude for that right now. Yeah, yes, I, I agree with that, especially, uh, especially as we start to approach holidays and, and where feelings and emotions get, get even bigger. Um, yeah, so uh, you and Urban Souls are celebrating 16 years. Yes. This, this uh, year, right, in July? Yeah, so um, we we celebrated 16 years. It was in 2004 that I launched the company at Dance Houston, um, the citywide dance festival that allows all kinds of dance styles and dance people to get on an amazing stage. Um, 16 years ago, um, I, I could not be on like a Wortham theater stage on my own. So it felt really good to be able to launch the company at one of our big theaters, right? With great lights and, and all the bells and whistles. Um, and so I launched the company at, with a solo. Um, it was just me. Um, I had the name. I knew I wanted it to be Urban Souls. I had already done the work to figure out what I wanted to call it. So I did a solo called Makes Me Wanna Holler at Dance Houston that year. And it was, a, um, it was about mass incarceration. And so I had an uncle who I was very close to who was uh, in jail at the time. And we had a great relationship. We wrote weekly to each other. Um, he's actually uh, the first person I came out to in my family. Um, and so we had a very special connection. And so I wanted to do a piece um, about his experience. And so it's called it Makes Me Wanna Holler. I had like these uh, faux jail cells on stage. And so I launched the company with a very heavy piece, but it was very clear um, of who I wanted the company to be in the beginning. I'm so grateful for that because I know a lot of people start things and they have to kind of find their way to what they wanna say. Um, but from the very first debut, it very much said that this is a black company and this is a company that wants to talk about social justice. Um, and so I kind of stuck with that. I, I kind of led with that and stuck with that. And so I'm really grateful about um, our, us being 16 years and being able to do so many works about the black community, so many works about the black experience and so many works about just how do we make the world better? And so certainly we've done other things as well. Um, we've danced, we've, we've done fun things too. <laughs> um, but just being able to have that kind of that kind of core and to always come back to home and know who we were is very important to me. And so I'm really excited that we have lasted 16 years, you know, a small dance company to last. Um, I think at a time I've talked to my colleagues and we always thought that 10 years was like the max for a lot of companies similar to us, if you're not like a big dance, amazing organization yeah. like Ailey or Dallas Black and those that have the- they have You don't the have those extra zeros. Yeah, I don't have those <laughs> zeros, you know? And so organizations that don't have that, you know, we thought maybe 10 years, may, you know, maybe 11. Um, so to be here 16 years and to be figuring out what do we do next, it, it feels really good. Yeah, well, happy sweet 16 for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the piece that we just, watched take me to the water um is certainly part of that uh part of your mission um mm -hmm. uh, that that shares the black experience and and black expression um and this piece comes from your remembering of going through the the process of baptism in the black church um so can you can you talk more about like your like the, the way that you like specifically remember that um, that process and oh, oh for sure and those, so, and those, the, the way that you put it the the bone deep memories of oh that. yeah I, lo I love that expression so much absolutely um, yeah I, I I call all of the works that I do that are nostalgic in nature bone deep because I feel like those memories just can't get away from you. 
Um, and I think we all have those types of memories and, and we call on them for different things. And so me being baptized is definitely a bone deep memory for me. Um, I grew up in, in the church. I was one of those people who was at church all the time. And so, um, but I don't have the experience that I was really forced to be there. I loved being there. It was uh, my church family and my church home was where I learned to lead. My first time leading was a youth choir. I was president of youth choir. And you know they had to vote for me, and so it was my first time having to like campaign for something. Um, and it shows up to even today in the things that I do in, in politics. And so it was really my first kind of like space at leadership, but it was this first space where I felt completely seen and heard outside of my family. I have an amazing family that I always felt seen and heard with, but outside of the home because getting bullied so much at school and not being able to kind of feel your, your way. Um, sometimes you feel so detached from everybody. Uh, church is something that felt like another home. I got the exact same feeling I felt at home, I felt at church. So everything around church for me is really, really good memories in my home church anyway, growing up. And so, um, you know, I thought a lot about the important parts or the fun parts or the amazing parts of what were big memories at church. And uh, certainly baptized, getting baptized was one. It was something that my church made a big deal about. You know, it was done, you know, once a month and, and people who were candidates for baptism, like everyone knew that this was the month they were being baptized. And so everyone came to support them and to see them. And so, um, you know, getting ready for it was this big deal because you had to bring extra clothes to be baptized in and you wore a certain thing afterwards. Um, and so you also knew beyond the kind of spectacle of it and what it meant to see it, you also knew that it was meaningful for your relationship at church with God, with the church. It was like a way to kind of deepen what you were what you were experiencing at church and kind of even though you know we did this as kids right you, we most of us got baptized as kids and we had no idea of the magnitude of what that meant within the theology of Christianity but we knew it was a big deal like you just knew it the way the pomp and circumstance and everything around it you knew it was a big deal and so I remember watching my friends get baptized all the ones that got baptized before me and I remember telling my grandmother I want to get baptized you know and I, I, I want to do it I want to do it and so she went through a series of questions with me about faith and things that I could handle at that time um, and to make sure that I was ready to be baptized. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, we, and once she felt that I was ready, you know, she allowed me to be baptized. And so I just remember it being just a really, really profound experience for me that deepened the relationship of a place that I really loved and felt home, which was um, one of the few places at that time um, that I felt that from. Um, and so that's kind of my experience of being baptized, you know, at my church. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the piece, I feel like certainly reflected that, uh, the, the moments of, of a sense of, of like ritual and procession um, through, throughout. Um, and I, you know, the, the space that you were in for, for the, the, the middle majority of it um, in the cistern is such a, I don't know, to me, like it, it looks like an underground church. Yeah. Like with, you know, with all of the, the columns and pillars. Um, and, and I, I wonder how, what was being in that space like, like at the, knowing the history of it, that it, you know, was this structure that provided water for the city of Houston, and then it was forgotten and then rediscovered, <laughs> um, which seems like almost impossible that, you know, the city could forget that there's this huge <laughs> cavernous cistern um, underground. But like, I, I just wonder what being in such a, such a vast space was like and how that, I don't know, sort of lended itself to, to you know, reminding, reminding everybody that, you know, that uh, there was this, this tie to a, a sense of, of church and, and ritual. Yeah, I mean, there, there are so many parallels. It, it's so poetic um, in so many ways, the, um, the space and the, the theme of the, of the piece. You know, when I first, when I first uh, became aware of the cistern is when everyone's making a big deal about Buffalo Bayou um, reopening it. And so mm -hmm. um, I, when I saw pictures of the reopening, I was like, wow, you know, that's an interesting space. And so my first kind of curiosity about it is just that it's just simply interesting. Um, and then when I did the first tour of it, I immediately thought of church because of all of the pillars that are in there. It's underground. It feels like you are away from everyone else. It's so um, serene. Um, and so I just thought 
I just had this kind of spiritual connection to what the space was. Um, and that was just me kind of looking at it. And, and I'm the type of person when I feel something like that, I always kind of want to do something there. And so I immediately said, I want to dance here. Um, I want to create or make a dance here. And so I knew that it was a space through the years that, um, that it had been around and redone that had not allowed a lot of live performance in it. <laughs> and so I myself said, okay, this is gonna be a challenge getting in here probably. Cause the things that they had done so far were projection things and very visual arts heavy, um, mm -hmm. which is, which is kind of like one of my um, uh, issues with situations like this is I feel like visual artists get to go everywhere, right? They get <laughs> everywhere because I think that their medium just kind of lends to a lot of things and makes a lot of sense for a lot of spaces. Um, and so um, I, I, once I got invited to kind of like do a piece here um, or I asked and it, it all just came together, I knew that I wanted to be religious based. Um, and then the water piece just made it make so much sense for it to be about, you know, baptism, you yeah. know, but when you really think about the fact that bapti being baptized is about becoming new and born again and, and that refreshing and that's kind of what they did with the cistern, there are these parallels between place and between kind of like this, th what the piece was about that's really, really special. And it kind of was one of those pieces that was just very, had a very sweet spot for me because of what the space says, what it is, and then what I wanted the piece to be about. Yeah. I um, had the opportunity, as, as I know a lot of other people did, to watch the the first iteration um, of the of the piece when when Buffalo Bayou Partnership <clears throat> had their fifth anniversary series that you all were a part of, um, and it was really I really appreciated being able to watch that version and then the the, the fuller version that that we just saw that that had sort of the, the intro and the outro, as, as well as like your really personal narrative that, that went across the, the whole film. And it, it, to me, it was so, the, even though, you know, 22 or so minutes are, are the same with, with some added um, narration, they, they felt so different. Mm -hmm. um, that, yeah, it, it's so, it's so, personal and honest and hopeful mm -hmm. um, that I don't know I, I really appreciated that so much um, yeah you know I, I we always knew the way that this project kind of developed we always knew that the middle section was going to be due to be aired before the full piece for cinema mm -hmm. arts and so we got to do that piece and record that piece first and release it and people got to see it first, but we already knew kind of what the, what the flow of it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we really wanted the middle section that we gave to Buffalo Bayou to really honor the space because that, that's what we were doing. We were really paying a homage to this amazing space and the anniversary of the organization. And so we, I didn't want the middle section to be overwhelmed by me. You know, I didn't want to make it really about me. I wanted to make it about the space as much as much as we could. So that middle section really was about the architecture. It really was about the echo when the dancers are speaking and you can hear that 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 echo that's in there. You know, and it really was about um, when he climbs up, you know, the, the, the stairwell where you can get out of the space. And it was really like showcasing, you know, every corner that I could of the space, but still keeping it within the framework that it would work for what we were gonna do with the larger work. And so then when we got back, got, got to go back and do the larger work, it was, you know, how do we add other water elements to this piece? Because it is about baptism, but it's about memory. So I don't want it to just be at a church in a baptismal pool because it's about when I see water, when I'm in water, I remember this. And so how can we then tie it to something else like a beach? And so it made a lot of sense to really start it out kind of at a church. I mean, we had to start it at a church so people really can kind of come with me in that memory. Um, and that church that we went to has such an amazing um, artwork and um, it, it's just a really beautiful setting that's Pleasant Hill here in Fifth Ward. And so I just love the way the, the baptismal pool is kind of flanked by these huge murals and it's so creative, um, but it really gives you this sense of kind of old tradition. And so I really love the way it looked. Um, and then I, I got to work with a, a, a young student um, who, who I've worked with before, um, but he got to play kind of the younger version of me in this. And it was very uh, sweet to, to work with him because he's also a Christian. He understands what baptism is. And so um, it, it was just really nice to have like a kind of intergenerational um, feel with this as well, because um, 
you know, when you talk about when I was eight years old, you know, and I say that, you know, in the piece explicitly, it, it's one thing to remember it and to not have presence of a youth voice or to not have presence of, of a youth at all. Um, and I think that a lot of times you, young people are shut out, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of times we don't allow that kind of youth um, connection for a lot of reasons and a lot of spaces. I mean, we're all trying to figure out how do we make this intergenerational, right? Mm -hmm. And so this was an opportunity to do that. I'm so glad we got to do that. He had a blast doing it and just really, I mean, he just, he just really got it. He just really got it. And so I was so pleased to work with him and then flanked by the end, um, who Denzel, who's playing the kind of older version or the now version of me and, and just those two knowing each other and just seeing how it all came together was really, really beautiful. Just this mix of kind of like young and older and, and what the memory means versus right now. Um, there was just all these things at play that made the both the process and the end product really, really special. Yeah, yeah, the 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 opening space in in that church, um, and the the young dancer, um, was such a grounding way to to start the journey, mm -hmm. uh, and then seeing Denzel, yeah, out out in in open water, um, mm -hmm. as as you recalling those those memories and those connections to water was, um, yeah, it was a really sweet way to 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 end the journey um yeah. Yeah. yeah, that church scene, the opening scene, I kept telling um, Alex, who who um, shot and edited the film, you know, at, at first the opening of just showing the church was so short. And I kept saying, it's too short. Like, you got to give them a moment at this church. Like, this mm -hmm. is too beautiful. I don't want this to pass by. And, you know, the, the, uh, the creative process of this, of working with Alex was really interesting because Alex is not a dancer. And so um, it, it's very interesting um, how non-dancers, um, feel about dance. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Alex wanted it to be very body and very dance wise. And I was like, there's not enough story. Like, I wanna see his eyes for longer time. I wanna see his face. Yeah. Like, I wanna see him just sit. Where's the stillness? Um, I just don't wanna see him moving. I don't wanna see the phrases. And I think that, you know, that was a good kind of like push and pull between Alex and I with me, um, uh, with him kind of like, it, what, what do we expect dancers to do on film? And me saying, this isn't really about that. You know, this is about telling a story and, and the movement will come and the movement will be there, but I don't wanna lead with what he can do in his body. I wanna lead with, um, you know, what he looks like in his eyes. You know, what is his spirit saying as he's just sitting in front of that cross? Um, and so that was the creative and the technical part of this was, was uh, very exciting to me as well um, because we got to have that kind of back and forth, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. I wonder what, um, like, you know, over the past eight months, the way that people create things looks way different, the process by which people create things and just the, the number of opportunities that there are to create and for people to, to be a part of someone else's process. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder what, what that was like with, with you and the dancers over the oh past few months. So I, I will say that the dancers love dancing in the cistern, first of all. Everyone who was a dancer was very grateful for this opportunity because they aren't doing a lot of creating right now. They aren't doing a lot of creative things. Um, and trying to figure it out virtually has been a challenge in a lot of areas. Um, and so they love that part of it. Um, and so I think that Denzel totally enjoyed, of course, dancing at the beach, like that, that's fun. Um, and I think that Gavin also really, really enjoyed being at that church because he gets it and he enjoyed just being a, just a young person being invited to be a part of something makes it special for him. Uh, but the company members that did the middle section I mean, they were just overwhelmed by the cistern, of course, because it's just beautiful. And getting a chance to dance in that is it, just, you know, it's just unbelievable, right? Mm -hmm. um, and unique and special because no one had gotten to dance in it before. Um, the flip side of that is that because we are in this moment, I can tell they were dying to do some synchronized phrase work, right? Mm -hmm. You know, which is what we're known for. And, you know, this this time doesn't really allow for us to be in big numbers like that and rehearse big phrases like that. And so yeah. uh, even up to the minute, they were like, are you sure you don't want to give us a phrase to do all together? And I'm like, 
I'm sure <laughs> that I don't want to do a place um, right now. I think I know you want to, but this not this time. And so I so there was a little bit of them that was dying for the old way, you know, and I could feel that and I get it. And, and I almost gave in at the last at the last minute. But I kind of you know stuck to my guns and said, no, it's going to be you know, what's going to be beautiful about this project is to look back and see that where we are played a major role in this, you know, the nostalgia yeah. about the piece. Um, on top of the nostalgia about the baptism, the nostalgia about the peace, that's important. So I don't want to pretend like, and I don't want the peace to pretend like we're not in a certain moment. I wanted to also document exactly, you know, where we are, even with the mask. Like, I hate the fact that they had to, to wear masks in the sister and peace, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, part of showcasing Black dancers on film, for me, is seeing the beauty, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's really a, a, a cornerstone of Urban Souls is to, is to show the beauty of Black dancers and show the beauty of Black people and to have to have so much of their face covered. I hated it. <laughs> like, I so hated it. Um, but, you know, it worked and, and it worked for this time. And it also, like I said, it documents kind of where we are and it doesn't pretend. And so I, I've always wanted to create work that did not pretend. Um, tell the truth about the history. So we have to tell the truth about today. Um, and so that was um, that was just one of the you know, the things that I want to make, you know, clear, because I don't want people to feel like, oh, they found a way to make art and everything was awesome. Um, and, and there were awesome things about it, but there, this also was nuanced, right? We had lots of feelings about this. There is this, as an artist, there is this little piece of you that wonders what this could have been like, were, if we were in our normal, you know, would it have been, you know, more awesome in my eyes or not, you know, or did this make it better? Um, there are things to consider that this moment allows us to consider that that I think um, are not necessarily feel good things to be thinking about, um, but there are definitely, you know, it's interrogation of, of the moment and of the time. And I think we should be honest about that and not really just pass over it. Cause I think resilience is, is a, is a, um, is an umbrella that artists hold over our head to wear this badge of, we did something in this terrible moment. And that is true. Mm -hmm. But it's also to be very honest about what we feel about that and what we felt about that process. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really important that um, that in honoring you, the the memories that you have of of um, the ritual of baptism that that you're not you're you're not eliminating the the memories that we will have of this year and everything right. that it has been and was and you know when we see when we see masks. Mm -hmm. In the future, looking back, you know, whenever that day is, you know, we will we will wrap up everything that happened in this in this year and however much of next. Right. Um, and it will. Yeah, it will come to symbolize so much yeah. um, that that it took everybody to to get to the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want the reality to be to be clear. You know, I, yeah. I, I definitely want. Um, I want this work to 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 be very very clear that this is you know what happened and so that that was really important to me and you know I went into this not even thinking about that honestly I mean of course I thought about you mm -hmm. know what could it, we 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 could and could not do um, yeah. but as once we got in it I was like oh there's a lot more things to think about here and I had not considered the dancers um, feelings in that way in them maybe wanting to do more. I just didn't think about it, honestly. I just thought, you know, I'll lay out the structure, we'll come in and do the work, and then they'll just filter into my work. Um, I hadn't really thought about the desire part of what yeah. the artists might have wanted. I had not thought about that until they asked. And when they asked, I was like, you know, I was like, huh, maybe. And then I kept kept moving and kept working and I was like, huh, maybe not, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it was just a part that I had not really, really thought through until I was in it, which is what I love about the creative process is that you don't know how it's gonna go. You know, on even when prepared, you just don't know. Yeah. How, it's the nature of what we do, right? Yeah. And so that's true about feelings and thoughts too. Um, beyond technicalities and logistics, um, there are these human things that that play a big role in, in creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Do you do you have like a a favorite? And this is like asking a parent to pick their favorite child. But like, do you have a like a favorite like section or moment in in the whole movement? Yeah, um, yeah, that is like asking. <laughs> it's uh, not fair. <laughs> but, but I feel that I was a favorite child. I have some. I have some. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. I really loved when, um, when in the the beginning moment, I'll do one for each section. I really loved in the beginning um, 
part with Gavin when his hands go into the water. Um, it's just his hands into the water because the way that the water looked, I don't know if it's just the fact that it's these old baptismal pools because my church is a really old church too. Um, but the way that the water looked, it looked exactly how I remember the water to look. And so his hands in the water was just like, oh yeah, you know, it really brought it back for me. So I love that moment. It's just a simple moment there. In the cistern section, the echo is my favorite part, which is crazy because it's not a dance thing, but it's the words that were chosen from the spoken word, uh, Ebony Stewart's work, the word that, that, that I chose from that and the way the dancers were so focused and just something that wasn't dancey, but it's just so profound. Really, that was my favorite part, you know, to see the words projected, you know, on the wall and when they, they turn and they touch the wall and it changes, that was just simple, but for me, it was one of the parts that I just really loved. It, it, I loved many, but that was one for me that that they're hearing the and you know dancers don't speak all the time, so just hearing them say things. I love when dancers speak and sing and and do things um, vocally. I really do, and so it was simple, but it was it was the part that I get so excited when their part is coming up. When I see them coming to it, I'm like, here's my part. So I love that, and then Denzel in the end. It's a very simple moment where Denzel is, is, is really just gazing on the rocks, you know, and there is something about you see the you see his black nail polish mm -hmm. uh, in this particular shot. And there's just something about his eyes and that and and and, and the black nail polish, because I don't explicitly state that some of the, the tension that I was feeling about baptism, I mean, there's, 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 there's Gavin wearing this red and white, so there's a little bit of play there. Mm -hmm. you know, um, There's not a lot that says, that talks about sexuality in the piece. It doesn't explicitly talk about it. But um, I think it, people might make some assumptions about it, but there's something about Denzel sitting on the rocks in the black nail polish that says, maybe, that mm -hmm. pushes it a little closer to um, what I would uh, want that the piece is truly about my true experience. I left it a little bit open just so people can develop their own experience with it. But there's something about that shot and seeing the black nail polish that just, mm, it was just really mm -hmm. special to me. Yeah, I, I, I loved, I loved like finding that detail in watching it. Um, and the, the, the way that it, that it was repeated throughout that like that questioning of, you know, is it, uh, can, can, can someone like me be saved, be cleaned, be cleansed, be um, truly forgiven? Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I feel like, I mean, I think we all know so many people where that, that wasn't the story that they were told. And that wasn't the, that wasn't the community that they were in. Yeah. Um, and, and that it, it went a completely different direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so, and that speaks to, I mean, this is getting a little deeper, probably, uh, uh, than, than we wanted to hear, but it really speaks to those marginalized, those people who are shut out, who question that. Cause, cause what's interesting about this is my, I, I come from a very open and my church loved me, but I still had those questions. Yeah. So it's like, even in a safe space, the world projects these kind of questions onto you. So you almost can't escape them. Even when you're in a safe environment, I had double safety where I was safe at church, safe at home, but I even still was like, me you know and so so yeah that there those questions in there was very important for me to establish that that there was tension but um what it does not really say is that the tension was really self-imposed a lot um or maybe just just really influenced by people who weren't the direct people and so a lot of people don't have that experience now i will say as i started to go to other churches i did not have the same experience as my church i want to make that very clear um because it was not as good as other churches growing up. And so um, there, I did get to experience what people felt that didn't get that. So I know what that feels like, um, but I just didn't feel it at home. So yeah, those questions for me were really, really important. And probably the, uh, before we run out of time, the only other thing I wanna make sure I talk about is the music. Mm. I really want to talk about them. So the spoken word in the spoken word to Ebony Stewart is amazing. That was such a short piece, but I hope to work with her on something larger at some point because I just love her poetic voice and she has such a gift. Um, but the music um, in the cistern part was uh, Rob Smith, who is a professor at U of H and works with Aurora, um, who I did a piece with him, um, a commissioned piece with him before, and I love his his music dances to me, it dances by itself. And so I knew who I wanted to use for this immediately. And so I got to use uh, uh, one of his uh, uh, big ensemble works. And so that was really, really fun. And then actually the Wade in the Water song was done by my barber. My barber is a rapper. 
yes, my barber is a rapper and he creates his own music. And so in cutting my hair, he said something about music and I was like, oh my God, you make music. And he's like, yes. I said, I need a song for this piece. And I just told him what the piece was about. And I said, I'm gonna be very honest. I don't wanna tell you what to make. I really want you to give me something that you created because if I guide you too much, it's going to be like, I already know what it's going to be like, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just told him what the piece was about. And I told him he could pick anything he wanted to do. And I was going to use whatever he gave me. And he came back and I absolutely loved it instantly. I said, he gets it. Like it just, it fit with not a lot. The only note I had was you got to make it longer. <laughs> it's so good that you need to make it longer. And so yeah. um, so uh, uh, he goes by uh, ES85 is his producer's name. And so uh, I'm really grateful that the music was just really, really uh perfect for for what we were able to create yeah that's yeah the, the music was um a really powerful guide through throughout the whole um throughout the whole film and your dancers were beautiful um and those dancers you know my my commitment to black dancers is just like it is so strong, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like I am married to the black dancers in Houston, and I am really about giving them just their due. You know, when I first started Urban Souls, one of the uh, things that I was so disappointed about is many of the dancers that came to me had graduated college, you know, and had came through dance programs, but had not had a lot of practice on stage because they didn't get cast a lot, or they didn't feel Mm -hmm. Value, you know, they didn't feel valued. And so I was doing a lot of building up and which I love to do that fits my personality. But I was also very sad that they didn't get to just come in a company and just fly, you know, like most dancers get to do you audition, you get in and then you're just working at your best. And it, it took a lot of mental and a lot of spiritual kind of building up to these dancers to get them ready for the stage, just because of the experiences that they had. So that that piece of my experience with black dancers is what solidified. This is who I want to work with. I want the works to be about them, but I want to showcase them in a way that they feel proud. And so can't say enough about the dance. Some of those dancers have been with me forever. And so I just can't say enough about um, about the dancers that were in the piece. Thank you, Harrison, so much for your commitment to Black dance artists. Um, thank you for this work. Thank you, Houston Cinema Arts Festival. Um, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. It was great talking to you too, and thank you for seeing the work.